All right. Good morning, everyone. Let's uh, continue and finish this exercise that we started last last class period. So we have here the if you if you don't have it yet open, make sure you launch the ten stability validation project. We did a lot of stuff last time, so we basically. Um, I guess the point that we stopped was right before running the analysis of variance models. If you want to, like on my side, I don't have anything in my environment. I'm just going to come to this ANOVAS chunk and run all above. So it creates uh, the objects that I need to proceed. If you did not leave any errors in the code above, it should work uh, just fine for you. It should be able to run until here. And once once it fit, once that green bar goes through, um, you know it, you should have all of the variables that we needed in our environment. So just a very quick recap of what we did last time. <clears throat> so our goal here were to bring in all those layers that we were uh, that we already processed throughout the semester, bring them all together in one file, merge them, export them, so we can reuse for a future exercise. And then also validate the spatial temporal yield classes, right? So just going very quickly here through the code from the beginning, from starting on the top, we we brought in the yield data, we brought in the terrain data, which was elevation, slope, aspect, and flow direction. We brought in the EC, the electroconductivity data, which was the shallow and deep EC. We also brought in the boundary, and then we merged all of those except for the boundary, right? So we did not merge the boundary here, but we did merge all of the, so the EO, the terrain, and the EC data all in one object that we call all underscore V, and then we exported that to file. In my case, again, my, all of those, all of those layers that, so the, the EO, the terrain, the EC, and then afterwards the merge object all V, all of them had the same number of rows, which on my side was 4,046. On your side, this number here is probably different, but within each one of you, this number, the number whatever you get here should be the same across all these layers, right? And it should be the same because we use the grid to extract the values from all of those layers and it was always the same grid. So we should have the same number of rows uh, across all of them because the grid had 4,046 cells. That's why this number is here, at least for me, 4,046. Then we just export that to file. We checked the summary of the variables, just making sure that we didn't have any weird values. We talked about why we have an A's in some of the columns and not in others. Then we made maps, right? So we made maps for all of these variables. So for the EO classes, for the elevation, for the slope, for the aspect, and then the shallow and deep EC. Then we combine all those maps into one output, and then we save that to file on this uh, all maps uh, object that if you open that, it should look like something like this. So we have one figure with all of our maps combined. All right, then we start we started talking about how can we validate because you know one thing is for you to create zones. And in this case here, those zones are based on yield solely. But yield is the only thing driving these yield classes here, right? So the spatial and temporal variability of yield alone is how we created these zones. We're gonna see that there's you know, there are many ways of creating zones. You can be changing what variables you use, how you treat them, how you combine them into a classification. There's different ways of creating zones. This first approach that we're looking into is an approach where you're starting with EO data and then you see what types of zones of yield you have, right? So this approach that we're validating here is just based on yield. The next exercise after this, we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna start with all the other properties, so soil, terrain, uh, and you see, and you use those layers to create zones. And those zones are gonna look different from these ones. And then we're gonna validate those zones bringing yield data. So it's like you have yield and you have the variables that affect yield. When you're creating zones, you can, you can start 
from either side and validate with the other. So this one here, the first one that we're looking at is we're starting with the zones that were only based on yield. Now we're gonna try to see what were the variables that we, that we collected and processed and if they can explain these yield classes. So that's what we're doing in this exercise. So I believe I left you all this code here, which again is, um, I mean, it would take us a, a, a little bit of a time to develop from scratch. And I, and I just wanted us to get to the final plot in the end, but really I'm just doing here is uh, rearranging the order of the levels of yield. So they would appear in the order that makes sense on the X axis. So going from low, medium, high, and then unstable. This, that's what this chunk here is doing. I'm just selecting out full direction. Then I am pivoting longer all of those terrain variables in a way that I can have one panel for each one of them when I when we bring in ggplots and use a facet wrap. That's what that part of the, this pivot longer is doing. And then I'm again coming here and just rearranging the levels or which is gonna be the order by which these plots appear. So I wanted to have first elevation, then slope, then aspect, then ECA, shallow and deep. If you, if I have not done this part of the code, um, it would just be in alphabetical order. So it would be aspect first, and then ECA 30, 90, and then elevation, and then slope. So we wouldn't be in an order that makes a lot of sense because it would start off with a terrain variable, then it would go to EC variables and then go back to terrain. So I'm just rearranging them so they appear, you know, all terrain variables first and then you see variables. That's what that part of the code is doing. And then just bringing that into a ggplot where on the X axis, I'm adding here the uh, stability classes that we created. And then on the Y axis, I'm bringing the value of each one of these variables here. So this Y axis is elevation meters. This Y axis is slope. This Y axis is aspect and so on. So creating box plots, just so we look at the distribution of all of those variables for each one of the stability classes and create some visual understanding of how these variables are creating or are potentially related, excuse me, potentially related to um, the yield stability classes. So last class we did, you know, we, we did talk about, I think was uh, Dalton who helped us here so he said that of all these variables, maybe the one that has the strongest visual signal here is elevation, where we see that this box plot has a higher elevation than the others. If you just bring this to the x-axis, this is the high stable. So high stable for this field had a higher elevation than any of the other classes. And then the others, you know, you may be able to tell a pattern, but it's not as evident just because the box plots are a little bit closer. So now the next step here is for us to run analysis of variance for each one of these plots that we're looking at here in a way that we can add ladder separation to these box plots. Um, Doug, have you, have you taken any statistical classes that would have introduced you to analysis of variance? So what? Analysis of variance? Okay. So yeah, I mean, that that is not the main focus of this class. So we're not gonna get into a lot of detail. So I would not expect you to really fully learn how to implement this, but I will, I mean, I think everyone else is graduate student. So I think everyone else would have had exposure to this already. But the, uh, the, the main point here is what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do in the next chunk, which is where we stopped is basically to actually be able to compare. So if you imagine, so when we call box plots and ggplots, that center line is actually the median. It's not the mean, it's the median of that box plot. Um, but you can kind of think of it as the mean, which is what analysis of variance is gonna do. It's going to compare those means and try to understand if the mean elevation for low stable, is that significantly different, statistically different from the mean elevation of mean to medium stable and high stable and unstable. The way that that works is we're gonna run a model and then we're gonna ask for that model or based on the model, we're gonna do pairwise comparisons. 
And then we're gonna add letters to each one of these box plots. So every time that a box plot shares, the two block box plots share the same letter, it means they're not different. If they do not share the same letter, so if one is A, the other is B, then they're statistically different. So that's what we're trying to do in the next chunk is just put some statistical objectivity on our visual assessment of these differences. I got right. a question. Yeah. So um, I have on my code, which is, you know, exactly as you have it there, <clears throat> but my graphs or the plots are missing the height stable. Okay. Um, so and here's probably what could have happened. So in class, when we were making, well, on the script that we were creating the stability classes, we were saying like, so we, we applied those rules of if CV is more than 30, then unstable. And then if CV less than 30 and mean, mean standardized yield is greater than this. So that chunk that we made those decisions, um, the way that out that I named those classes on my side were this. What I suspect is probably on your side, when you are typing these classes, if you type them differently than me, that's what would have been causing it. So I would say that probably, so let's say here, when I am rearranging these, these, these the, the sequence here, if in your case, for, let's say, for example, if you would have typed low stable with uppercase low, that would create what you're saying. Because now it's looking for, all my code now is looking for lowercase low stable, but if you have uppercase, it's not identifying that as being equivalent. Well, and the plot says NA. Yeah, that's probably it because it's not, so I am rearranging here and then it's not able to match what I have in the in my script with what you have on your data set, probably because of what happened on that other script. So it creates NAs. That would be my guess. Okay. <clears throat> so if you, uh, I guess if you want to test that, I mean, there are different ways you can test that, but one of them is if you just select this first mutate and you delete it and then you run it, you should have, it should work now. However, the order here is different. Like it's not gonna be low, medium, high, and stable. And again, my guess is probably when you named these, your names a little bit different than what I named. And so your names are not matching mine, which is not matching my code, which then creates the problem. I just did exactly what you did. And I have them right here. They're exactly the same. I, I, <clears throat> okay, so you deleted that mutate, the first mutate, and then you rerun, and then you got what I'm seeing? The first mutate that it goes all the way to unstable, right? Yes. So it's starting on this line and deleting until you close the, the until there. So delete that. Okay. And then run. They give me an error, unexpected symbol in unstable. Hmm. Yeah, without seeing your code, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, is anyone else having that issue? You saw, and, and so uh, we had a student here in Athens that had a similar problem to what you're describing, Rolando, and the solution was that, what I just described. Maybe in your case, it's not the same problem, but I guess without looking at your code and data, it's gonna be more difficult to troubleshoot. And it seems like, other people are not having the same issue. So maybe we can connect after class. I can help you out with your code on one-on-one on Zoom. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Because really, you know, even so you're not going to be able to run potentially and get what I'm getting. But as long as you can see my code for now, that's going to be enough. We do want to make sure your code is working after class. But for now, just seeing what we're doing here is going gonna, is gonna to be enough. Okay. All right. Okay, so I just, um, yeah. So if you if you notice, I guess, uh, for everyone, 
So if I do remove this, just so you see the actual effect of that, if I do re remember, I told you that this part of the code here was just rearranging the levels of ST class so they would show as low, me low stable, medium stable, high stable, unstable. If I don't have this piece of the code and I run that, I get this plot where it goes alphabetically. So it starts with high stable and then low stable and then medium and unstable. That's what that code above was doing. It's just reordering this so it is on a more intuitive way. So we're starting with low, go to medium, go to high. Instead of starting with high, go to low, go to medium, right? So that's what that part of the code was doing. Right, so let me just make sure around this. <clears throat> okay, so then we talked about... Um, basically running an analysis of variance to test statistically if those means are actually different from, from each other for each one of the terrain variables and then comparing each one of the ST, the, the, the stability classes. I asked you all to install these packages last class, right? So if you, if you had not done that, you can try to do that now and, and catch up, but I hope that you have already done it. So it would have basically just uncomment, run that install packages, not the whole chunk, just that line of code, and then comment it off again, go to the next one, do the same, go to the next one, do the same, and so on. So if you're all able to install these packages, um, again, in this class, the goal of this class is not to teach you how to do analysis of variance. So I'm just gonna skip very quickly about what this code is doing. If you want to know more about that, I have another class that we go into way more detail on how to do this. But so if you uh, make sure you load this, this libraries so that E means is going to allow us to compare the means. Multicomp is going to add the letter, is going to help us to get the letter separation, which is what we use to interpret the differences. Uh, per here is just helping us to do a mapping in the sense of iteration. Again, this is probably not something you have to worry about. We're not going to learn that in this class. Uh, and then car is just uh, for us to, to use the ANOVA function um, in this case. All right, so very quickly here, what this code is doing is starting with all V, which is, again, that, that object that has all of the layers combined. It is pivoting longer. Uh, all the terrain, all the all the field level or all the field variables, then grouping by them and, and nesting, just to show you here, you know, it, if this is the first time you're looking at this, don't worry, it's gonna be very confusing and that's okay. But we're just creating a data frame where in one of the columns, each cell is another data frame in itself, but then we're just using that data frame to create analysis of variance for each one of these variables and then extracting the ANOVA table, and then extracting pairwise comparisons and creating a plot. So again, this is way over what this course is about. I just left you the code so we, it could work and we could get to the point that we want to get, which is the, ANOVA, the analysis of variance letters, letter separation for the variables. So if you just go ahead and run this code, again, oh, I got an error here. What, what is going on? Oh, I did not load the packages. So let me make sure I load those four packages. And then I run this. Okay, I think now it worked. Um, I would expect that it, as long as you all install these packages and you load these packages before running the chunk, it should work as well. Just one to show you what this object here that we're creating called ANOVAS, what does that look like? So that is basically a data frame where we have um, the means for each one of the variables here, elevation, slope, aspect. We have the means for the mean in this case here would be the mean elevation would be this value. Um, and then the mean slope and so on for each one of the classes. And we also have the letter separation. So we have the, the analysis of variance results of the letters. And we also have a plot that we can look into, which is gonna be on the next chunk. Hey, Dr. Vasos. Yes. Flint and Tipton, I, I still got a, 
I still got an error with mine. Is that on on this part on this chunk here? Yes. Uh, do you? Let's see. Do you know? I mean, can you? Is is that like an informative error that if you read to me, it may be able we may be able to look into it. Um, say five warnings and mutate argument and nova map. I mean, I got some warnings, but I never got it here. I had the same thing, and it's still it ran and just said that there was five warnings, but it still ran on. Uh, group one name aspect. Okay. So what I would say is make sure you load this, you run these lines here. Yeah, I, I did. Okay. And you're still getting, is that like an error that is stopping the code or is just a warning that lets it go through, but just gives you a, a warning? It's caught. It's in a caused by error in map. Okay. So it's probably on this first map here. So, hmm, interesting. I wonder if this is related to some of the differences coming from previous scripts that is just reflecting now. Because really, if our if our columns and names would have been exactly the same, then I don't think anyone should have had issues with the code. So there's probably some difference between how we're all naming things that is now reflecting here. Um, So I think again, if if you're having trouble with this part of the code here, I can help you out. You know, on a one on one, I can connect with you as well, Clint, and see what, like troubleshoot more closely what is going on, because I think it's going to be very specific. Um, but for now, you know, I think it's okay. As I was telling Rolando, I think it's okay for you to just keep going, even if your code is not working. We're going to make it work afterwards. Uh, but for now, I think it's okay if you just watch uh, on the screen and and then we can, because there's going to be some questions I want to ask you all that will require for you to see what I'm seeing. So if for some reason you cannot reproduce the same thing because of some difference that happened in previous exercises, that is going to take a little bit of, you know, it's not something we can really troubleshoot um, efficiently in class. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just gonna keep moving here just so we get to this main part. And then um, after class, we can connect with whoever is not being able to reproduce the same the same results. Okay, so in this next chunk, I'm basically uh, just making a the same plot as before, but now I'm adding to those box plots the, the letter separation. So if you are familiar with ANOVAs, this should look familiar. If you're not, so let me give you a quick um, help here. So with letter separation, this is basically a way for us to interpret if those means are statistically different from one another or not. So if we start with elevation here, the way that we would interpret that is that the highest elevation here coming from high stable has a letter A, and if you look at the other box plots in this plot, nothing else has an A. So that is significantly the highest elevation for the high stable class. And then if you see the second, the, the, the next, I guess, lowest elevation from going from highest to lowest, the second highest perhaps <laughs> would be elevation for the medium stable, which has a B. And then if you see at the other, if you look at the other box plots, none of them have B. So all of these elevations are significantly different from each other, where the highest is coming from the high stable, the lowest is coming from the low stable, right? So now maybe let's look at one that is a little bit more mixed. Perhaps it's just the slope one. So on the slope one, let's, let's look at that again. So statistically, the slope of the medium stable, which has an A here, is the highest. The lowest would be the slope at high stable, which has the low the, the 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 which has a C here, which in this case is the lowest let letter, I guess, if you think of A being highest, and then as you move down the alphabet being lower, 
So C here for the slope case, C would be the lowest. However, if you notice here, the box plot for unstable on the case of slope is called B BC. So what that means is that slope for unstable is not statistically different from the high stable because they share a C and is also not statistically different from the slope of low stable because they share a B. So if they share a letter, they're not different. They're only different if they do not share a letter, which in the elevation, all the letters were different. So they're all different from, from each other. On the case of slope, the slope of unstable is only different from the slope of medium stable because they do not share a letter, but it's it's not different from low stable or high stable because they do share a letter with that. Yes. So I'm not seeing on my own heart graph or the box plots are somewhere like, but like I don't have a BC. It's not just C where you're. So you have the letters, you have the box plots, but the, the but letters. the letters are different. Right. It's just okay. the letters. Some of like the aspect letters are a little different. Okay. You have B A A B. Okay. For aspect. aspect, you have B. A, A, B. Mm -hmm. And slope, I have B, A, C, C. Okay, interesting. So this is the first semester that like, that we are using the, the boundary for the H, H1 created. In the previous semesters, we would have the same boundary. So we would get to this point and the letters would be the same because we have all the same data. Uh, so this is new, I guess new to me to realize that that you may be getting different letters. Um, and that's not that's not a problem. Um, you know, as long as we understand that you know we're getting some some differences because of the way that we have the boundary and how much data was uh, included or not included in the in the data set because of boundary differences. So what I let me think about it here. So what I want to propose then is, at least for us to be able to talk as a group, I do want you all to look at my plots and answer the questions I have next. So for now, kind of ignore what you're seeing on your side, just for sake of us all being able to get to the same conclusion of how we interpret this. However, you know, if you were doing this for, you know, your field, you will of course look at your specific plots for this. But for, for the class purpose of us all being able to see the same thing and, and talk about the same thing, let's use what you're seeing on my screen here so we're all on the same page. All right, so <clears throat> we kind of went through how we would interpret a couple of cases here, but we have not done that for all of these variables. So what I want you to do on your side, so you have this on your script, um, I want you to to look at these and create this understanding. So if we if we would go, if you would think of like, just for high stable areas, let's characterize high stable areas. So if you look, and then again, look on my plot, not on yours, even if you're able to, to produce it, just so we can all get to the same conclusion uh, and, and be able to talk about it. So if I'm looking at, let's do high stable together, and then I'll give you a moment to do low stable and unstable by ourselves. So for high stable areas, if we look at elevation, right? So on the elevation map, high stable is the orange one. High stable had the highest elevation, right? Because it, it and it was by itself, so, right? So there's nothing else sharing A. So for high stable elevation, elevation was highest. So I would come here and say elevation highest. That's just what I want, the way I want to interpret this. So if we go to slope next, High stable again is the orange one. It was the lowest, but not different from unstable. But I'm just gonna say that it was the lowest slope. If we go to aspect, high stable was the highest aspect. In this case here, you know, aspect, the way that we would interpret it is if it is a very high number, uh, like if it was like 360 would be the highest, I guess, if you think of degrees from zero to 360, it would be facing north. In this case here, it was the highest, but if you look on the y-axis, that highest is around, 
100 degrees, which is like in between north and east. So, you know, perhaps in a northeastern direction. Of course, that, you know, we don't really have to worry much about that. But just to create some understanding that the others have a lower degree. So it will be moving more north than east in that case. So for aspect, high stable was highest. Again, because it had the, the highest value and because it has A in it by itself. For ECA 30, so electric connectivity shallow. I, quick question. Yes. Um, I, I was just thinking, you said that um, the 100 degree aspect would be northeast. What? Yeah, um, what what did that be? Wouldn't that be slightly southeast? Like I, I would have thought 90 degrees would be due east. Yes, that's correct. I I I I got I got confused in my own thinking. Thanks, Clint, for bringing that up. So yeah, that's that's exactly correct. So if zero is north, 90 would be east, and then 180 would be south. Yeah. So 100 would be um yeah, in between, it would be more southeast. That's correct. Yes, thanks, Glenn, for bringing that up. Um, so on the ECA 30, if we look at high stable, it is not the highest. The highest here is medium stable, but it's also not the lowest. So I would say on shallow uh, electric connectivity, high stable is intermediate. And then on deep ECA, um, high stable is highest. So it has A and it's not sharing that A with anyone else. So it has the highest value there. Okay, so I did this. We did this together. Now I want you all to do the, the, the same for the low stable areas and then for the unstable areas. So we're going on the extremes here. We're getting the high stable, we're getting the low stable and also getting the unstable. So I'm gonna give you here um, five minutes for you to work through these on your side. Please take note as you're moving down here as well. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Yes, please look at my map when you're answering those. Let me also put a timer.
All right, so the timer is up for us to kind of uh, interpret at least how these variables are impacting high, high stable, low stable, and unstable. Um, so what I had here on my side, let's just let's just make maybe go through. Let me try to plot this out so we can still see it while I'm writing here. Um, let's see if we can make this work. Okay, can someone help me here with, when we're talking about low stable areas, how did you interpret that being related to elevation? Ujwal, can you help me here with that first one? So an elevation, so this was low stable, right? So elevation was lowest on the high stable, I'm sorry, on the low stable class, elevation was lowest. Um, what about Neva? What about on slope? Intermediate, right? Because it is B, so it's not the highest, not the lowest. For aspect, send us, what did you write? Right. Lowest, right? Because it has a C there, so it's the lowest aspect, meaning it's the one perhaps moving closer to the, well, in this case here would be still maybe around 90 degrees, so it would be going east. For ECA shallow, for Nelisa, what did you write? Lowest, right? And then lastly here for ECA deep, Doug, what did you have? Lowest, right? Because it has a C there as well. All right, so now let's go on the unstable areas, do the same exercise here. Let me ask other people, um, close this and be able to see participants here. Huh. Where is that? I guess I lost it. I don't know where to... Lost I lost the view of you all. <laughs> So I'm just going to, I guess, remember who else may be online. Uh, so, Rolando, <laughs> what did you write for elevation on unstable? Uh, intermediate. Intermediate, right. It is not the highest. It's not the lowest. It's kind of like in that. Still kind of on the lower side, but it's, it's not the lowest statistically. So, yeah, intermediate elevation. Um, I flipped the order here for some reason. But for, uh, okay, so let's go ECA shallow. So this map here for unstable. Uh, Clint, what did you have there? Uh, you said, you said uh, ECA shallow. Yep, uh, lowest. Lowest, right. So it's interesting because, so one thing I want to add here. So it was lowest and it was the same, I mean, lowest and the same as the, uh, low stable, right? Mm -hmm. So we bring some, <laughs> this case here, we bring a little bit more context. For ECA deep, um, is Dalton in class today? So I cannot really see the. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Lowest. Lowest, right? So ECA deep, lowest, light, just like, same as low stable as well. When we go to slope, how does unstable behave. Let's see, um, is Vinicius, oh, I don't think Vinicius is in class today. Uh, is Kumar there? Yeah, 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 yeah. we got, we got Vinicius. Vinicius. I am here. Oh, okay, sorry, Vinicius, I thought you <laughs> were not in class today. Vinicius, can you help? <laughs> and for the slope is lowest. Yeah, so for slope, unstable here is is lowest, but also similar to the other one, to the low and the, um, High, interestingly enough, right? So for slope here, it would be lowest, but similar to high stable. Let's see. Um, 
Yeah, that's that. That would be that. If you said it, it should also be that. Um, it's kind of like in the space that. Yeah. Okay. So it is BC, right? So it's. Yes. Sorry. I'll say intermediate there. Yeah, I think it could be either lowest or intermediate because it does have B and C in this case. Um, but I guess maybe the main point for us to to get here is that it's not different from the highest, and not it's also not different from the lowest stable, right? Which is, I guess, part of the unstable is that, right? It's going to share some commonalities with the lowest. It's going to share some commonalities with the highest because it depends on the year, depending on the variable we're looking at. So similar to both high and low stable. Is the box plot supposed to, to show like uh, the same letters? Because my one here is just a C on this low on the unstable class. Just showing a C. Yeah, so that's probably related to how our boundaries. Are. Oh yeah, I gotcha. But as yeah, long this as is what have, I thought. So for this exercise, I guess we're focusing on what I'm seeing just so we can all talk about the same. But on your side, you may be seeing something slightly different, and that's okay. All right, and so for the last one here, aspect Kumar, what did you get for unstable there? Uh, it is like medi intermediate to low. Yes, and that is similar to medium stable, right? All right, so this is what I got. Maybe, let's see, on the elevation, I, I don't think it was similar to anything else. It was lowest period. So this is what I got on my side. Uh, we have here five minutes left, which I think should be enough time for you to go through the quiz that we that finishes this exercise. So I have on ELC a quiz for you. It should be visible. Um, it's called Quiz Stability Classes. I have three questions for you that I want you to basically tell me how you would interpret these, right? So now we... So we have the stability classes. Now we gave a little bit, a little bit more context in relation to the variables that we could, that we had a hand to explain them. But now I want you to look at these and tell me, you know, why do you think that highest elevation, lowest slope, highest aspect, intermediate ECA shallow, and highest ECA deep would make an area of this field high stable? How do you interpret this? How does that create this effect? So I'm asking you to tell me about the high stable, the low stable, and also the unstable. And what is your interpretation of what we have here? So if you go to EOC, I'm basically just asking you to do that in three different questions, each one for each one of these classes. I do want you to go back to the answers that we had here. I'm going to pull up the, the plot again, if in case you want to see it. Um, but remember to give your answers based on what we did based on my plots and not necessarily the one you're seeing on your side. So the quiz is should be visible. Uh, you can get started on it. And uh, and that's gonna, yeah. As you finish the quiz, you're dismissed from class. Um, and that's gonna be your attendance as well.